Hello and welcome to the third video in a series looking at programming in Python. Now if you haven't seen the first two videos I strongly suggest that you head over and have a quick look at them. The first video introduces you to the idea of Python, shows you where to get it, how to download it, how to install it and all for free. The second video, the last one I did, started to look at variables and what a variable is. And we ended up with this code here with um, a variable called my variable containing the name Justin, a second variable that contained the name Arnold, and then we instructed the computer to print or display for us the first of those variables and then the second of those variables. So when we right clicked and we click run, the output that we get here is the contents of the first variable, then a space, that's caused by this little comma up here, and then the name Arnold, the contents of the second variable. So it looks as though we've joined those two variables together, but of course we haven't really. They're still separate variables. We've just simply said print this one and then print that one. What we're going to look at now is actually combining two variables into one variable. The first thing I'm going to do though is to change the name of these variables because they're a little bit long and a bit difficult to spot. And generally as programmers we like to have short, easy to spot variable names. Great long-winded variable names which become sentences might seem to make sense to begin with but they're a nightmare to spot as you're reading through the code quickly. And the more letters you've got, the more code there is, and the, the fiddler gets to, to read it through and look for bugs. So I'm going to call the first variable A, which means, of course, I'm going to have to change this line of code here. And then I'm going to cause, uh, call my second variable B. So I'm going to put that in there and then change this code. So what I've got now is variable A equals the name Justin, variable B equals the name Arnold, and then we're going to get the computer to simply print out or display in this box down here variable A and then variable B. So if I right click and I run this you'll see we get exactly the same output there at the bottom, the first variable and then the second. But now let's look at combining those two variables. So we're going to put these two variables into C. Not terribly uh, surprising. Um, so C equals what? Well, C equals A and B. I'll put spaces in there just so you can see it more clearly. So C is going to equal A plus B. Now, of course, it's not actually adding up A and B. What it's doing is it's saying take the variable A and then the variable B and connect the two together. Add them as two separate ideas, two separate bits of information together in a long string of bits of information. So C is going to equal the first variable and also the second variable. Now what we can do here is we'll delete that line that says print A comma B and what I'm going to do is instead ask it to simply print C. So we've got two separate variables We've then got a third variable, which says take those two separate variables and put them together. And then we're simply going to print C, print whatever is in that third variable. So if I right click and I run my code now, you'll see we get the output just in Arnold. We haven't got a space. Why have we not got a space? Well, because earlier on we had print A comma B. And that comma is important. When you are printing multiple variables in Python, you can separate those multiple variables with a comma. And what Python will do is it will use that comma and replace it with a space. So when I said print A comma B, what it did is it printed A, then a space, then B. But of course we didn't put a comma in this with C equals A plus B. So it is simply taking the first bit of information and slamming it right up against the second bit of information. Um, now one of the things that we can do here is to simply change what C equals. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say C equals A 
plus. Now we're not going to put B straight in there. A plus a space. I'm going to simply put a space in speech marks because that's just simply text. So it's A plus a space, then plus B. So now C equals the first variable, then a space, and then the second variable. So let's try running our code now. And you'll see that down the bottom here we have the first name, then a space, and then the second name. Now, of course, what we can do is we can change what's inside a variable. Once we've put some text or a number in a variable, it doesn't mean that that variable is always going to contain that same text or that same number. We can change what's in a variable any time we like. That's kind of why they're called variables. They can vary. So what we're going to do here is prove that we can change a variable. So I'm going to say a equals, um, and then I'm going to change my name to, I don't know, Bob. There we are. And then what I'm going to do is say C equals A plus a space plus B. And then we're going to print C again. So let's think about what we've done here. So we've taken a variable A and put that name into it. Then a variable B, put that name into it taken a new variable C and combined A and B, sticking a space in between them, and then we've printed that third variable. So of course we've got the first name, then a space, and then the second name. But now we've changed what's inside A, we've changed what's inside that variable. So A no longer contains the name Justin. We have completely replaced what's inside A with the name Bob. So a variable can only ever contain one thing. That might be a letter, a name, a sentence, a paragraph, an essay, a number. So a variable can contain a thing. And once you say to it, right, that variable now can, um, is going to contain this instead, it has to remove whatsoever is in there now and replace it whatever we're going to add in afterwards. So A now only equals Bob. C of course has to be updated. So we say right now go and get your box C. You're going to have to update what's in there now. Get whatever's in A. Then add a space. Then get it whatever's in box B and stick them all together into C. And then output C. Print C. So when I run this program now we've got two print commands. The first command will print my name as it really is, with a space in. And the second time it prints my name, it's going to print the new version of A. So it'll be Bob Arnold instead of Justin Arnold. Let's just prove that. Let's right click and click uh, run whatever you've called your program. And there we are. We see we have two names there. The first one is the variable C which of course is actually A plus B. And then we have C again. So it's the same variable, we're printing C both times. But the first time we print C, it's collecting what's in A and B. The second time we print C, it's again collecting what's in A and B, but A has been changed. So we're no longer collecting what used to be in A, we're only collecting what is in A now. So if you're practicing um, these tools yourself, if you have Python, which I strongly suggest that you are doing, um, try doing that yourself. Try putting something into a variable, um, then combining variables into separate variables, like I did with my variable C, Try outputting that, try changing variables, then outputting a new version of your variable, just so you get the hang of putting information into a variable and then combining them, changing them, outputting them, and so forth. These are fairly basic but very important skills and concepts to be aware of. Variables are one of the most fundamental parts of computer programming. There's pretty much no program 
um, that you will ever come across that isn't going to use a variable at some point and often many many different variables so getting a basic understanding of what a variable is and how we can manipulate these variables is absolutely crucial to not just understanding Python but understanding programming in general now if you have any questions, any problems, any comments at all, please do leave them in the comments section below. I read all comments and I do try to reply personally to your comments. If there are any individual problems then I'll try to address those in the comments section. Otherwise general suggestions or comments or problems I'll address within subsequent videos. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Uh, please do click the like button and don't forget to subscribe so that you know when the next video has been released. And I look forward to seeing you in that next video.